So if you are a skull based surgeon or an ENT surgeon or a radiologist, uh, so this thing you have to remember, you, you should know this, the rule of 6, 12, 24. Well, uh, it is actually called as the rule of 24, 12 and 6 uh, because it is from the anterior to the posterior aspect. So I'm going to show you the basic anatomy of this uh, particular rule uh, which is concerned in the uh, skull base anatomy. Uh, so what is what, what happens exactly in this rule is that uh, you have to locate the anterior lacrimal crest as you can see in the uh, bony anatomy over here from the external aspect and uh, I'll show you this as well as I'll show you the uh, radiological aspect uh, for the radiologists out there. So this becomes really easy for all of us to understand this basic concept. So okay, so um, the first thing is the, the photograph over here. Uh, first of all, you need to locate the lacrimal fossa. As you can see in the center, this is a fossa of lacrimal sac in which the lacrimal sac is lodged and it is covered with lacrimal fascia all around and anteriorly it is bounded by the anterior lacrimal crest which is formed by the frontonasal process of maxilla as we all know and posteriorly inferiorly actually uh, it is formed by the lacrimal bone. Now the lacrimal bone is a thin bone so it is damaged really easily during surgery uh, and that forms the uh, posterior lacrimal crest in the inferior posterior part. So this is the basic anatomy of which, uh, of, of which the anterior lacrimal crest is taken as the margin and from this anterior lacrimal crest if we keep on going posteriorly uh, you get you get the anterior and the posterior at moral foramen and the canal and eventually you get the optic canal as well so the anterior lacrimal crest is a reference over here so i hope this basic anatomy is clear the same photograph i will show you and that will make it much more easy for you to understand so as you can see over here this is the same image but uh, different labeling uh, as you can see over here this is the area of the lacrimal fossa as the labeling suggests so this basically becomes the frontonasal process of maxilla which forms the anterior lacrimal crest and from there you keep on going behind behind and uh, so we get three locations so the first location will be the anterior ethmoidal foramen and that is basically 24 mm uh, posterior to the anterior lacrimal crest similarly from the anterior ethmoidal foramen or the canal uh, 12 mm posteriorly is the posterior ethmoidal foramen right here so you have to remember most young ENT surgeons uh, get this wrong basically at this point that they think that from the anterior lacrimal crest the anterior ethmoidal artery is 24 mm that's for sure but they think that from the uh, anterior lacrimal crest again it is the posterior is 12 mm so it is basically wrong so you have to go from the anterior to the posterior aspect and the 24 mm comes first and not the 6 mm 6 mm is way behind there uh, so the first thing that comes is 24 mm and the anterior lacrimal crest to anterior ethmoidal foramen is 24 mm which is 2.4 centimeters roughly and from the anterior ethmoidal foramen as you can see over here 12 mm which is roughly 1.2 centimeters posteriorly is the posterior ethmoidal foramen so the distance between these two anterior and the posterior ethmoidal canal foramen is roughly 1.2 centimeters and then again from the posterior ethmoidal canal or the foramen again if you go 6 millimeters which is roughly 0.6 centimeters behind you will see the optic nerve protuberance or uh, in the optic canal over there in the sphenoid region so this is how the measurements are done on a basic general bony anatomy so if the same thing I show you on radiological aspect, it becomes really easy for an ENT and skull base surgeon and a radiologist to pinpoint any pathological condition or any variation in the rule of 24, 12 and 6. So the common mistake which young surgeons do is that they think that 6 mm it comes from the anterior aspect but no it is actually from the posterior aspect. So remember that 6 is for sphenoid and we can see the optic nerve in sphenoid sinus. So it's 6 mm is posteriorly. So if I show you a uh, zoomed out version of all these three. So first at all, first of all we need to locate the uh, anterior ethmoidal lacrimal fossa basically on the 
coronal section. As you can see over here, we are at the coronal section right now and I need to go to the most anterior aspect of the patient's uh, CT scan. So I'm going to go towards the frontal skin. And from there, as I explained in my last lecture, how you can definitely identify the uh, lacrimal fossa area is to follow the frontonasal process of maxilla, right? So as you can see over here, this is a frontonasal process of maxilla. You keep on going behind slowly and you will start seeing the first pneumatized air cell, which is the agar nasi cell over here. And all the same, almost the same time, you can see a depression over here lateral to the nasal, the frontonasal process of maxilla is the, uh, the lacrimal uh, fossa over here. So this depression over here, this opacity is the lacrimal sac over here. And that's the most initial part of the, uh, the maxillary sinus. So once you locate the, uh, the lacrimal fossa, that means you have to go to the most anterior aspect of it. I think roughly this should be the area of the uh, the la anterior lacrimal crest roughly around here. So on the sagittal section, if you can cross check that, uh, this denotes the area of the most anterior aspect of the anterior lacrimal crest. And on the, uh, the axial section, you can see actually, you can actually see that this is the lacrimal sac area and this is at the most anterior aspect and that's a proper anterior lacrimal crest. So this is how you basically try to locate uh, the area of the anterior lacrimal crest in high precision. So the second step will be always to uh, go behind so that you can locate the anterior ethmoidal artery. So on the coronal section itself, I'm going to I'm going to keep on going behind till I find the anterior ethmoidal artery. And uh, the moment I see the conical uh, appearance over here, as you can see, uh, that's the uh, conical appearance of the, uh, the medial wall of the lamina papyracea. That's the that's the Kennedy nipple sign at the confluence of medial rectus and the superior oblique muscle. So that's how you locate the anterior ethmoidal artery. And if I locate this anterior ethmoidal artery over here, the same thing we can see on the sagittal section that this is the anterior ethmoidal artery. And this was roughly the area of the anterior lacrimal crest. So if I draw a, a margin, So this is roughly if I draw a margin and uh, so suppose from this level to this level, uh, it becomes like this. So around at present, this, is, this patient is showing uh, the variation as 1.77 centimeters roughly. Basically, it should be a normal range of 2.4 centimeters at 24 mm. But this patient is having a variation in case of uh, this patient. I think it's having a variation. So the anterior ethmoidal artery may be present somehow a bit anteriorly. So there may be variations present for the patient sometimes. So the rough area is around 2 to 2.4 centimeters. And in this patient, it is roughly around uh, 1.77 centimeters. So it also varies on the sagittal scan because uh, the anterior ethmoidal artery is high up and the anterior lacrimal crest may vary at a particular angle over here. So this is the rough estimate how you can get that. The second thing is that you have to locate for the anterior ethmoidal artery and posterior ethmoidal artery. So you keep on going posteriorly until you find the posterior ethmoidal artery, which should be roughly around somewhere here. So I can see the posterior ethmoidal artery over here, the conical shaping. So if I, if I try to locate this on the section over here, so this, uh, as you can see on the axial, this was the area of the anterior ethmoidal artery. So this becomes the posterior ethmoidal artery. So if I try to, you know, locate the area and try to draw this, this roughly becomes uh, one point around uh, from the initial part, 1.35 roughly. So we know that it is around uh, 12 mm, right? That is 1.2. So this patient is having the thickness of around 1.3 centimeters roughly. So as we said, the anterior ethmoidal artery is kind of anteriorly placed in this patient. So the distance between the anterior ethmoidal artery and the posterior ethmoidal artery also increases as a consequence. So I think the anterior ethmoidal artery of this patient is kind of placed anteriorly so that uh, distance over here between the AEA and the posterior artery also increases.
So uh, I think you can you can roughly estimate this area. And uh, the final thing is that we have to locate the optic nerve. So as you can see on the sagittal scan, we have the distance of this patient. And on the axial scan, we have the distance as shown as on the screen. So the last thing for us is to locate the optic nerve and uh, which we can locate near the sphenoid sinus. And that should be roughly once you locate the sphenoid sinus, which is roughly around now. And you can start seeing the carotid artery prominence, the optic nerve prominence. So this is the optic nerve prominence, which is medial to the anterior clinoid process, as you can see over here. So I think uh, the moment you start seeing the optic nerve impression should be roughly around here. So if I keep my cursor over here, this should be the rough area of the optic nerve right here once you start seeing the bulge. So this area, as you can see on the axial section as well, you can actually start seeing the optic nerve over here. I think uh, this, is a, this is the most posterior aspect and I think that the bulge is kind of somewhere over here. So I can actually see the bulge happening over in this area. So you have to be very observant in reading a radiological scan. And if I try to measure this, uh, it should be roughly around 0.6. But in this case, uh, let's see what is the variation. So if I try to measure this from the posterior aspect of the artery to the bulge of the optic nerve, okay, wait a second, it should be roughly around somewhere here. So it should be rough. This is roughly showing me the area of about uh, 7 mm. So it kind of varies in patient to patient. But the general rule is that uh, maybe I got a CT scan of a patient who is around having a variation in the anatomical location. So but the general consideration is roughly about 24, 12 and 6 with plus and minus variations depending upon the anatomical location of the artery and the canal in the skull base because the position of the arteries, uh, the canal may be variable depending upon the pneumatization of skull base. So the more the pneumatization of the skull base, the more variation you will see in the anatomical position of all these three uh, structures, which is the the anterior posterior ethmoidal artery uh, and the optic nerve as well. So this is how you actually try to study the rule of 6, 12, 24 and its variation. Uh, so I hope this video was really helpful. And if at all you have any doubts regarding this concerned topic, uh, you can feel free to message me in the comment section below and uh, I'll feel uh, I'll be surely uh, happy to reply to that. So. Um, Till then, take care, guys. Be safe out there.